Good morning, my name is Richard Cronice. What are we learning today? Well, we're going to talk about PMBOK 5 and the key to learning PMP formulas. Teaching you all the PMP formulas would take hours. Sometimes it might even take a day or two depending on your class setting. So my goal today is teaching you the secret key to learning PMP formulas and I hope this will take about 15 minutes. Before I begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Richard Cronice. That's me over on the right. My name is unique. It is my brand. I am the only Richard Cronice in the U.S. and anywhere. I am easy to find on LinkedIn. I am a PMP from Chicago, Illinois as of June 2013. I am a business analyst, project manager, SharePoint evangelist, and all of this in Chicago, Illinois. I am a trainer of 10,000 but honestly, all that matters is how well I teach you today, and hopefully you have some fun. My career focus, as of 9-21-2013, the date of this video, is combining my PMP with project management services, especially Microsoft SharePoint. So let's begin. PMP 5, the key to PMP formulas. Well, as you know, uh, the Project Management Institute requires 35 hours of classroom training to be eligible to take the PMP test. Now, in class, your teacher told you to memorize PMP formulas. Depending on your math skills, this may require memorizing anywhere from 10 to 20 formulas. It just depends on how you learn. I'm not doing all that today. I'm just teaching you the key to remembering many of these PMP formulas. So, to do this, I need to show you a brain dump page. At the uh, Prometric Testing Center, when you take your PMP test, you have 15 minutes to study the PMP test method. I normally, well, I did this once, I spent one minute skimming the Prometric test method, and I spent the other 14 minutes writing down my 47 processes and the formula page. Here in the US, we call this a brain dump process. Now, certification tests are not a new thing. Uh, as best I can tell, they are 3,500 years old. The, uh, this is actually based off of something called the Rind Mathematical Papyrus. So, taking tests, uh, taking math tests as part of certification is not new. The early Egyptians were great project managers. And just for the fun of it, here's the Pharaoh's certification test. This is over on uh, Wikipedia you can look it up. It is the Rind Mathematical Papyrus. And you wish that you're glad you don't have to take these formulas. Pretty daunting, pretty scary stuff. So returning to what we're doing, all we have to do is learn something a whole lot simpler. And to that end, here's my PMP formula brain dump. I'll explain the general uh, parts to it. And the key part is the chart. So let's take a look at it. It is over here. So this is uh, a bird's eye view of it. I'll blow it up for you in a little bit. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, this chart is the key part to everything. This is something I did for quality with quality names and HR names. It's not critical. It doesn't relate to this. It's just something I did for my brain dump. What does matter are all of these formulas. And if you count them up, there's about a dozen. So let's make them a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. Let's make this about oh, 125, blow it up. So now you can see the uh, chart is here. And this chart really uh, supports all this regarding uh, SV, CV, which stands for Schedule Variance, Cost Variance. You're going to have to figure out how to write your own. You'll find formula brain dumps all over the internet. But what I found very curious is that in all the formula brain dumps, they never combined this chart on it. And once I realized I kept trying to learn these uh, formulas, uh, was not doing a great job on it, but when I finally decided and realized the importance of this chart and actually put this chart uh, on my brain dump page, and it only took uh, 15 to 30 seconds to write it on the brain dump page for the PMP test, um, these formulas all began to make sense for me. So let's take a look back here and understand this a little bit better. So the chart is the key part to learn the formulas. Now, drawing the chart, as I said, takes about 15 to 30 seconds. What does the chart mean? I'll explain it. One really key thing is that you absolutely need project accountants to do this. Then it makes a great deal of sense. 
So the chart that I showed you, getting back to here, this chart right here, this chart makes a whole lot of sense in relation to these two questions. And the questions are, is the project on schedule? That's a schedule variance question. And is the project on budget? And that's a cost variance question. To explain all this to you, uh, here are my explanations regarding a chart, a process, negative examples, completion. I use Excel for explaining this, so let's take a visit over to Excel. I've already built this chart for you. So this, uh, this is something I've built. Uh, as you can see for the chart, I already have the formulas there. I have the chart itself, and I uh, have some dates that are here. So this uh, particular example has to do with building the Pharaoh's Pyramid, but you're going to build it as of 2013. So let's take a look at the process and understand this a bit better. In the process, uh, in a perfect world, you have uh, planned value, you have earned value, you have actual costs. The planning is what you expect everything to be. The earned value is what you've actually done as work units, and the actual cost is here. Perhaps this makes more sense. The, the process, um, you have designed the pyramid, you have building transport for the pyramid, the roads, and and the boats that would bring all the huge uh, granite to there and acquiring your workforce. All of this should be done by the year 2023. And when you do it on time, the Pharaoh is extremely happy. Now, when you complete the project, you can see that the rest of this, the building the pyramid, acquiring materials, it's all been done together. And all of these things taken together fit underneath the budget at completion if everything fits nice and neat like that, the Pharaoh is extremely happy because it means that the project was done on time, or I should say on schedule, and on, uh, on budget. Well, that's not the way this normally works. Let's take an example of a negative, down here, a negative schedule variance example. Uh, negative schedule variance example. This answers the question of, is the project on schedule? So, in the work breakdown structure here, uh, we had uh, design pyramid, transport, acquire workforce, and at a later time build pyramid, acquire materials. But you began in 2013, and by 2023 you were supposed to have designing of the pyramid, building of the transport system, massive roads, um, the, uh, the system for bringing granite uh, up the Nile, and acquiring workforce was all supposed to be done by 2023. But let's say that all you did you were able to accomplish these work breakdown structures. And you can see that it's, it's fitting underneath earned value. That's how much you've earned so far. But there's a real problem because you haven't done, you haven't acquired the workforce. Now, once again, in, in explaining all this, when I first learned it, I had a great deal of trouble understanding the math behind it. You have to understand that accountants, project accountants, are giving you the numbers that pertain to the completion of these work breakdown structure units. So the accountants are giving you this information. They are building it. That's where the numbers are coming from. But getting back to this, in this situation, this negative schedule variance example, all you've done is design the pyramid and build the transport. And so for earned value over here, that's what you've done. It's a problem. You even ha haven't even done acquire workforce. So let's take a look at the math. This is a schedule variance uh, issue. So your earned value minus your present value, this here, gives you your schedule variance. So your earned value, I'll move this aside so you can see it, this is earned value. So your earned value minus your planned value, which is this point, this is for the year 2023. So a low number minus a high number, that's going to give you a negative. Whoops, got to pull this over here. So for this situation, a lower number minus a higher number gives you a negative. So that means that your schedule variance is a negative. That's not a good thing. That is a bad thing. And the Pharaoh will be unhappy with you because this project is behind schedule. Its schedule variance is negative. Let's take a look over at the cost variance example. Yes, a negative here is a bad thing also. So the formula for cost variance up here is that your earned value, which would be this, 
your earned value minus your actual cost should be should be should be zero. That would be a perfect uh, perfect world or a plus. That'd be good also. So let's say that you've done acquiring the workforce, building the transport, design the pyramids, and we bring it over to here. So how does that look? Well, this is not a good thing because you can see underneath it transparently the earned value and the actual costs. What's happening is that you know these three elements were supposed to come in here at this point, at this earned value, when in fact they came in much higher. So what does that mean? The earned value, which is a low number, minus this intersection point here, the actual cost, the low number minus the high number, the earned value minus the actual cost, moving this over, is a negative. It is a serious negative. So this gap right here between here and here, that gap is a negative and the pharaoh will be very displeased. This means that your cost variance is negative. So these are negative examples regarding uh, schedule variance and cost variance. Projects can also go well, but what this gets back to is we're really trying to memorize a methodology for the formulas. So this chart, if you just draw this chart, the formulas make so much sense. Once again, showing it in context, the formula brain dump that you build, you absolutely need to build this chart. It's so simple. All you do is just build your y-axis, then you do the x-axis, draw a nice wavy curve here for this, then do a earned value underneath it, actual cost underneath it. And don't forget to mark the different pieces. You just have to write in three or four different things and you're good. Of course, you have to memorize these formulas. So these are really big ones. And then you have to add the different formulas that you're having trouble with. So the key to all this is that chart. So let's return to our training outline. So you've heard my explanation for the chart, the process, negative schedule variance, negative cost variance, and what a completion should look like. So what's happened before for the 47 processes is that people start emailing me or trying to contact me saying, you know, gee, Rich, can you send me the, uh, your formula brain dump? And I made a decision on this. Sorry, I can't email this formula brain dump to you. Here's why. As a teacher, if I mail it to you, it doesn't help you. You haven't built it. You have to build it. You have to struggle with it. You have to work it so it makes sense to you. So what I am saying is copy my format, include the chart. That's really what I'm giving you is the concept of the chart. And then put in the formulas that you need. You don't need all of them. You may be a math whiz. So um, some of these formulas you may not need at all. So perhaps you're really good with future value and, and present value. You don't need this kind of stuff. And you also have to build this in a way that you can memorize it. So I'm hoping that you will do that, that you will take my advice and you will copy my format, include the chart, which is really important, and build your own formulas. Now, if you really, really struggle with this and you have trouble, I might consider sending it to you. But I want you to try it. You need to work it and build it. Please consider that. So, thanks for visiting Dad's Learning Videos on YouTube today. I hope you had fun. It's kind of hard to say that. Uh, how do you have fun studying for the PMP? It's so strenuous. But really, there are times when studying the PMP can be a lot of fun. So hopefully it was fun for you today. Once again, my name is Richard Cronice. It's a unique name, a unique brand. I am the only Richard Cronice in the United States or anywhere to my best knowledge. Your LinkedIn inquiries are welcomed. Tell me uh, when you send an inquiry how you found out about me. New projects are certainly welcomed. Training engagements are welcomed. There's a university that's asking me, uh, is considering using me for teaching the PMP. That's very flattering. And also, employers are welcome to uh, give me a call or their HR staff, and recruiters are always welcomed. So that's it. Have a great day. Thanks for visiting, and super best wishes on passing the PMP. Have a great day. Take care.